now move to the next uh, speaker. Uh, please forgive me if I don't pronounce the words correctly. Uh, Jean Vincent Legrand, Technical Director, Sejem Avionic Safran Group. He graduated as an aerospace. Sir, could you kindly come to the podium, please? He graduated as an aerospace engineer in 1984 and joined Dassault Aviation as a design engineer. There he was involved in the development of the Rafale fighter avionic system, mainly in the navigation and flight control system. He then joined Sejam Company, where he managed the development of avionic systems for fighter aircraft upgrades and of complete UAV systems before being awarded the contract for ASSM development. He is currently technical director for system technology at Sejam. He is in charge of all R&T activities associated with the ASSM missile and avionic systems. He has been managing the design of ASSM weapons since the very beginning, almost 10 years ago. Okay. And now hand over to Jean Vincent Legrand to kindly give his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having the opportunity to, to present that conference today. Uh, I think my uh, paper will uh, be a, a a good complement to the previous conference because uh, we will go into more detail on uh, technology trade-off for missile, but specifically for uh, for the seekers. Um, first of all, we will go through uh, uh, evolution of the requirement, wi which drives, in fact, uh, uh, with the evolution of uh, technology, the, the development of the new uh, seekers. Then uh, a broad view of all the guidance sensors and, and the trade-off that we are facing. Uh, and then uh, 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 a view on uh, what the difficulties and challenges are for uh, integration process in order to, to take the best out of the, the hardware we are able to, uh, um, to manufacture. Um, in the past, uh, for uh, anti-surface weapon, the, the, the context was quite easy because uh, you had to fight uh, combat vehicles in open countryside areas uh, or military or infrastructure, uh, military or industrial infrastructure. In fact, you had to face a, a structured forces. And it is rapidly evolving to uh, a, a, a combat scene which can be in uh, urban or densely populated areas. Uh, you can also have the presence of non-combatant personnel and uh, target can be anything, but anything is not a target. Uh, so um, you are more and more in an uh, informal uh, area. How does it impact the requirement? So you, we, can f we, we have found in, in the past uh, 10 to 15 years a growing, growing requirement for accuracy. We are we are we have spoken uh, a lot about PGM recently, but also for target target discrimination, we need positive ID uh, before shooting now, uh, which means that imaging systems are more and more man mandatory for sites, but also for the missiles themselves. We, we have seen uh, examples also today with uh, Helena, for example. Sajem has been, uh, uh, back, back in the past, Sajem has been uh, active in the uh, infrared seeker development for uh, a number of years now. Uh, and uh, we have delivered more than uh, 30,000 uh, infrared seekers. So we, we have followed all the evolution of the technology from the, from the, the first uh, single element to the very integrated uh, seeker that we produce now. I will not go into more details on that, ju just to remind you that we, we, are, we were able to follow all the, techno the technological evolution. Uh, I will go then into more details for each of the components, but uh, literally a seeker for a missile is uh, very packed with technologies. Uh, you can find um, uh, technology in the, in the window itself, but also in the line of sight and stabilization of the line of sight, the optics, the sensor, the, the, the uh, optical sensor, the cryotechnics, which can be associated, the initial measurement unit, which is more and more integrated uh, to give the, the, the best performance uh, to the optronic systems, 
and then structure, electronics, and uh, processing, digital processing, data processing, and very high speed uh, uh, data processing. First, infrared sensor. When we go for infrared sensor, the first thing that we, we, we see on the missile is the window. Choosing the material for a window I is a challenge. It's the, 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 the main challenge because uh, you can see on that chart here that depending on, on the uh, wavelengths that you want to use, uh, you will have to select, you, you have a, a very uh, short selection of material available. And all those materials have uh, 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 not only benefits, but also drawbacks, uh, because you have to manufacture them, you have to procure them, they can be ex expensive. Uh, you have to monitor their uh, optical quality for transmission. And they have, uh, moreover, to uh, withstand all the environment that you can find in a missile, vibration, temperature, shocks, and so on. And the problem is not quite easy. And more and more, the problem is complicated by the fact that you want to have uh, dual band um, uh, sensors in order to, to, to use the complementarity between, between the two bands. And uh, the problem is uh, uh, complicated by that because you, you will want to have a, a, a window which is transparent in several bands and uh, the choice is uh, still smaller. It is not uncommon uh, today that the, the window is the, the single most expensive part of um, uh, an infrared seeker. So uh, a particular attention has to be paid for uh, the selection of, of that uh, piece. As far as the line of sight stabilization is concerned, uh, a, a lot of uh, methods uh, are available and have been uh, developed and fielded uh, uh, on, on the Sagem products from uh, what we call uh, heliostat, which is in fact the, the, the sensor is fixed and, and the line of sight is moving through uh, uh, mirrors with gimbal mirrors or uh, a two axis, two axis or three axis platform, uh, including the optics and the sensor, down to the full strap down uh, solution where the, the, the sensor itself is fixed with respect to the, 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 the field of uh, with the, the structure of the missile, which gives you a, a field of view which is uh, uh, exactly the same as the field of regard. And uh, all those solutions have to be dealt with with respect to uh, the requirement, the operational requirement, and, and the, 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 the method of uh, uh, designating the uh, target. It is not specifically a challenge. Uh, uh, the only thing is, I would say, cost, because uh, the, the more moving part uh, the, the most expensive uh, the, sense the, the, the seeker is, but uh, there is no specific uh, uh, technological uh, uh, challenge on that. The sensor itself, um, which has, uh, uh, you, you can select the shape, uh, it can be discrete element, linear element, or array element, uh, now, uh, all the solutions that are designed uh, use a 2D, 2D sensor with more and more uh, pixels. The wavelengths, uh, depending on, on the, 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 the low, low, um, low wavelengths to, to high wavelengths, or even you can be multispectral, which complicates the problem, but uh, which is more and more uh, a solution to, to cope with uh, uh, exact target identification. And depending also on the technology, you can go for cooled or uncooled sensor. Cooled sensor is the, the preferred and, and the, the, in fact, the, the traditional way of, of uh, uh, building, uh, of, when, of uh, designing uh, an IR uh, seeker. But more and more, we can go, uh, the technology offers us uncooled uh, sensors, which are not yet to the sensitivity that we can uh, have with a cool sensor, but uh, which have some uh, uh, benefits. Uh, primarily, the, the fact that uh, you don't need uh, any uh, cryotechnics uh, to operate it. The real, uh, 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 the real challenge for the IR sensor is the supply chain security, because uh, finding a, a, a good uh, IR sensor which is ITAR free, so uh, free from uh, export uh, license from the US, is not that easy. 
cryotechnics if you go for uh, uh, only if you go for uh, a cooled sensor you've got two two basic methods uh, either a cooling machine uh, stirling uh, uh, cycle or a method which is um, easier to operate uh, uh, gas expansion in uh, with a joule thompson uh, system uh, which is faster for for cooling the, the system but uh, uh, has less autonomy obviously depends on the size of the bottle that you can fit in uh, in your uh, missile um, there is an impact on the line of sight stabilization if the sensor is mobile you understand that providing a, a cooling gas to a, a mobile system is uh, uh, not as easy as uh, providing it to a strap-on system so the, the main challenge on, on that is uh, uh, comes if you have a requirement of very short cooling times in, in terms of seconds for example for fast fast reaction uh, anti-aircraft missiles for example uh, if you want to, to initiate rapidly uh, a sensor or for for example for anti-tactical ballistic missile if you go for IR uh, you can have a, a, a challenge in the, in the cooling time of the sensor this is an example of a dual band uh, uh, project it's not a product uh, it's a it's a project uh, just to uh, illustrate the fact that uh, there is a shared aperture between two wavelengths uh, uh, a 12 micron uh, wavelength uh, here with a telescope uh, kind of uh, optics and uh, uh, in the same field of view uh, a semi-active laser detector uh, I will uh, elaborate further on what kind of uh, cooperation we can have between those two uh, sensors but that gives you uh, a, an example of how uh, the, the design uh, of such uh, a gimbal uh, system uh, can be uh, uh, quite difficult in order to fit all, all what you need in, into a very small volume. Um, the, the diameter here uh, can be uh, as low as uh, 120 uh, millimeters for, for small anti-tank missiles. The other category of uh, uh, sensors uh, that is absolutely necessary in a, in a seeker is the IMU. The IMU in a missile uh, uh, fulfills uh, several uh, important roles. It provides uh, the FCS with uh, guidance and control parameters. Uh, it provides the seeker with uh, line of sight orientation and stabilization parameter. And more and more uh, in the case of uh, lock on after launch missiles which is the the, the case for uh, helena for uh, probably uh, akash as well uh, not akash uh, uh, astra as well uh, it needs uh, it gives position location to the missile so the missile can go to a definite basket where it can acquire automatically uh, the the target in fact in all uh, BVR missile, you need a navigation to, to get to that basket. Uh, and in that case, you need IMU to, to fulfill that role. Um, problem is, uh, the requirement for guidance and control parameters for line of sight orientation or for position location are absolutely not the same. In some case, you want uh, a, a low noise. In other case, you want uh, a low drift uh, and uh, over on the top of that, since it is a missile, it has been it, it has to be stored for a long period of time without maintenance. You need a, a very short, a very, very small uh, uh, drift of the parameters in the time over the time. Ten years after storage, you you want to be able to 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 turn on, to turn on the IMU and uh, you want it to deliver the performance that it was designed for without any test and maintenance and so on. That, that is a, a, a very difficult uh, uh, challenge. And then uh, once you have selected the, the right IMU, you have to integrate it with a, a seeker. Uh, you have to harmonize the sensor to synchronize both of them. Uh, uh, when you refer to uh, air-to-air missiles, you've got uh, uh, closing speed, which are in, in order of, of uh, uh, Mach 2 to 4, uh, which means that uh, you are looking for milliseconds uh, uh, for uh, inside the synchronization between the, the 
IMU and uh, seeker uh, sensor. Particularly, uh, if you go for a strap down seeker, which is one of the examples I will give uh, uh, later, um, you, you have to, to know very well the, 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 the error model of the IR sensor and the uh, inertial uh, sensors. And again, as for the uh, infrared sensor, the main challenge uh, is not to find the, the performance, the, the, the sensors providing the performance, it is to find the ITAR free sensors providing the performance. Uh, at SAGEM, we, we have developed for, uh, again, for uh, a number of decades, uh, all the technologies, uh, I'm sorry, the, the slides are not quite uh, visible, uh, all the technologies for uh, uh, sensors from here, all, all the classical mechanical sensors, here the vibrating sensors, and here the optical sensors. So we, we, we have uh, uh, developed uh, over the time all the technologies because they, they uh, and even now we still uh, have several technologies active because they don't have the same uh, performance, the same characteristics, and, the, and the, there is no uh, uh, one size fits all sensors in, in IMU. So you, you, you get to have all the technologies available if you want to select exactly uh, uh, the sensor which is uh, more fitted to uh, your application. So in the mechanical sen sensors, the, the, the best uh, known is the, the dry tune gyros. Uh, in the optical sensors, we've got uh, uh, ring laser gyros, different size, and uh, fiber optic gyros. And uh, vibrating gyros, which are quite well known for uh, uh, MEMS application, but which are also uh, 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 used with uh, what we call the hemispherical resonating gyros, uh, which, are, uh, uh, which is a quite a new technology providing a very good uh, 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 long-term accuracy, but with a very low noise, uh, which is uh, uh, a good performance. Um, this is on, on the chart. Uh, you can see here the, the an order of magnitude of the of the uh, drift of the gyro, and this is the, the maturity of the gyro. You can see the the the, the, the old um, the oldest ones, uh, uh, but they are still uh, well in uh, in service now, and uh, uh, the MEMS which are in development. And uh, today, the, the the families that are in deploy that we use for uh, new projects. Uh, with uh, ring laser gyros, vibrating uh, uh, gyros, uh, low grade here and uh, high grade here. Other sensors. Uh, you can, uh, one, one, once you have fitted uh, uh, IR and inertial sensor, you can also uh, need other sensors to, to, to complete uh, the, the, the suit. Uh, for example, SatNav, GPS, GLONASS, GAGAN, Galileo, uh, to provide navigation update. Uh, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, even on tactical missiles now you, you need uh, navigation. The problem with SatNav is that they can be jammed or denied. So you definitely uh, uh, want to have their performance, but uh, uh, you can never be sure that you, you will get it. So it's always a, a, a trade-off to know uh, uh, Will we use it or not? The radar. The radar is the, the, the only true uh, all-weather designation system uh, uh, existing. One of the problems, especially with respect to the new requirement that I mentioned at the beginning, is that uh, they provide, they very difficultly provide target ID. You can find spots and so on, but is it really your target? It's not easy to say. And uh, more or less, on, on, on uh, especially on uh, anti-surface uh, missile, they require quite specific trajectory to, to, to illuminate, I would say, correctly uh, with the, the, the good uh, angles, uh, the intending targets. So it, it imposes some uh, uh, constraint on, uh, on uh, trajectory design. And uh, finally, data links, uh, which are more and more common, uh, even on tactical uh, missile, because they can uh, provide target updates to the to the weapon when uh, when you are uh, after a mobile target. Uh, it can be uh, useful to to update the, the position of the target while it is moving and while the the, the, the missile is getting to it. Uh, and 
in the other direction, it provides the shooter with a weapon and target status or even the, the, the sensor image so that the, the, the shooter can uh, uh, select another target or even deny, uh, invalidate the, 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 the target. It is not the, the right one. But data link requires antennas and so on. And uh, the, the last one uh, is the laser seeker. You can also uh, uh, have a laser, um, uh, semi-active laser uh, uh, seekers in order to provide for accuracy, but also for positive identification so that you, uh, as I heard uh, uh, previously, uh, you can hit the, the, the precise window of the, of the building. Uh, these are two examples of, of design that, that we have here. Uh, one on uh, Ertogon uh, uh, missile uh, ASM, uh, which is a strapped down solution, which is quite uh, an original one. And this one for uh, an artillery projectile, which is uh, optimized for uh, uh, size and cost, uh, with especially a, a single lens uh, optics. Integration. The, the key of the performance uh, of the seeker is the efficient integration of technology, and, and that is uh, the, the most important part. Uh, you want to take the best out, out of the sensors, and you want to compensate what we could call the, the shortfalls, because uh, no, no, no sensor can uh, uh, make all the, uh, the mission. And moreover, you have to fit that into a very compact design uh, with a very high level of environment and, uh, and, uh, uh, and constraints. Several techniques, uh, I will not go in into further detail on that because uh, it could require a, a conference by itself. Uh, several techniques uh, are, are used and, and are complementary, in fact. Uh, sensor fusion, if you think of uh, IR and uh, visible image, you can compensate the shortfall of each wavelength by uh, uh, fusing the, 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 the two images. Hybridization, the, the, the most common uh, use of hybridization is uh, 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 updating the INS with the GPS, with the Kalman filtering to, to, to care for uh, uh, long-term uh, errors of the INS. But uh, we also have uh, performed hybridization between INS and uh, IR images, uh, in a, especially in a, in a strapped-on solution, uh, which gives us uh, some kind of, uh, I would say, a terrain reference navigation. But in that case, we, we with respect to, to what is uh, uh, commonly uh, accepted as um, terrain reference navigation, we, we, we don't uh, uh, we don't use the, the terrain elevation. We we, we use the terrain features in order to update the navigation automatically. Uh, another technique is handover. Uh, for example, uh, a sensor can be good at detecting a target, but not at identifying uh, it or at tracking it. So you can imagine to have up to three sensors on, on the same uh, missile. The first sensor can detect the target. The second is used for uh, identifying it as uh, a valid target, uh, especially uh, by the, 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 the shooter, uh, generally, by man in the loop. And we could also imagine that a third, uh, a third sensor is used for tracking the target up to the impact. Example, uh, example of that, uh, you, you, you can imagine with radar, IR, SAL, and so on. And high level, the, the, the last technique I want to mention is high level data processing. Uh, you can enhance the, 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 the operation of the sensors uh, by data processing. Uh, you can use uh, what is very uh, common uh, um, image processing. Uh, in order to, to find features in the, uh, in the terrain. Uh, you also, uh, with the Kalman filtering, can use uh, uh, updates to, uh, uh, um, to estimate uh, the errors of uh, sensors and so on. One, uh, uh, one example of technology integration is, is, uh, uh, that I wanted to mention is the, the ASM uh, Hammer, 
uh, which is an air to ground weapon fitted on, on, on a French uh, uh, Rafale fighter, uh, which integrates all the technology I mentioned here uh, with uh, an IR seeker, with INS, uh, with a relatively high grade INS for a tactical missile. Uh, a GPS and uh, the data link is not yet operational but is in uh, uh, design phase and all that is integrated in a, uh, uh, in a missile which has a, a very uh, clever trajectory giving it uh, uh, characteristics closer to uh, a cruise missile than to a ballistic uh, bomb uh, and in particular we it is also uh, it has also a, a, a mode of operation which is a lock on after launch, where uh, the weapon is released as a truly fire and forget, uh, flies autonomously to a, a, a basket, and then thanks to uh, um, data processing uh, can find uh, the target coordinate and hit uh, at uh, metric accuracy. Uh, this is an example of. Uh, this is an example of uh, uh, data processing uh, with uh, this is the, the, the predicted uh, image uh, and this is the image correlated and uh, you can uh, estimate by uh, mathematical function uh, where, where the maximum of uh, uh, possibility is and estimate where the, the target is even if you, nev you, you have never seen the target itself, you just know the, the, the target location with respect to, uh, to a scene. And it has demonstrated uh, uh, very, very good accuracy and, and reliability during uh, not only flight tests, but also uh, uh, during operation. Uh, I finished my presentation on, uh, on that. Uh, uh, I just want to uh, uh, emphasize the fact that uh, designing a seeker uh, uh, is a true challenge because uh, we've got a, a lot of conflicting requirements. And if we want to, to take uh, the best out of all the sensors, we, we've got to know the, the technology uh, in very much uh, detail and uh, uh, to be able to integrate it for, for, for the best of to, to, to find the best out of uh, each uh, sensor. Thank you. As Mr. Legrand has completed his uh, talk in the correct 25 minutes, we'll, we'll allow a couple of questions. So if you don't mind, if there are any questions, please. Sajem, Sajem is part uh, of the Safran group. Um, the data link, the data link uh, uh, is anticipated in uh, in flight test in uh, tw uh, 2013. Uh, thank you very much, sir.